All right, well, hello, and oh God, this noise is killing me. You might as well see Dante's Inferno, my dear viewer. This is what the depths of hell looks like. That will give you some lighting effects. Dante, Dante, hell, afterlife, hereafter. What if God does exist, my atheist friends? What if he's there? What if he's watching your every move? What if there's a reason for why we suffer and so-called prayers are not answered? Are you kidding me? This is Dante. This is the this is the demon. The demons. The demons of Dante. Dante's in for all right, I know I'm being stupid. And um I appreciate you uh tuning in and all this nonsense. This is um hold on a second. Hello, it's Zaidi Boy. Hey, listen, this is the Raptors, but the Leafs are playing Tampa Bay tomorrow. Tampa Bay, Tampa, Tampa. What, what, what kind of, why would you name a city Tampa, right? It's like TPS. I call them tampons. Toronto Police Service, fucking tampons. Now, Tampa is, is, is American, and I don't want to diss my American friends. They got enough on their hands with Trumpulus Remus. All I'm going to say is that we're going to go and test out my new, my latest acquisition. Hmm? I went to the pawn shop. I bought a beautiful ring. I bought Dante's Inferno, right? And I bought a wah pedal. What's a wah pedal? You're a damn crybaby if you don't know what a wah pedal is. Wah pedal is Jimi Hendrix. That's it. This is the whole thing. Niche marketing. Jimi Hendrix is the only guy who ever used a wah pedal. Why did no one use a wah pedal after him? Because he killed everyone with that thing. Why? Because he was on acid, lots of acid. He had cuts in his forehead with a razor blade and his bandana was soaked in LSD, fucking LSD. If anyone's ever tripped on acid, they know that that is out of control. You take a little, probably like four to five millimeter square tab. It's called a tab. It's a piece of paper soaked in acid. And that's all you take. And for 12 hours, you're like, the wall is like, that's my little baby in, in Colombia right now anyway uh you know you're it's basically a waking dream that's really all it is it induces the same chemical response in your body as if you were dreaming but you're awake and it's like whoa and and, and you know like myself most people can't handle that stuff it's like it's too intense you know it's funny that they have drugs how come nobody takes mescaline or peyote or all of these natural drugs anyway uh we're gonna go test this fucking thing out and that's the purpose of this movie I appreciate you watching. Sorry about the F-bomb. Hopefully it'll be the last one. And uh, no, I'm not high. Uh, I don't do drugs and all this stuff. Anything else? There we go. I don't take medication. I take, I take, what I do take is I, I take vitamins. Okay. I take fish oil. I take fruit and vegetables. I really recommend you do this stuff. There's no way you can get five servings of, of fruits and vegetables every day. Are you going to get five? You'll be like, oh, well, it's not that great. It's in the Are you stupid? It's better than nothing. Okay? And calcium for your goddamn bones, okay? Or whatever you think is lacking in you. Fish oil, everything, right? No, no medication. Why? Because pharmaceutical is a corporation. Okay? Pharmaceutical has one. It's a business model. You don't understand this thing. I'm a business consultant, okay? I like to call myself an organizational consultant. Self-styled organizational consultant, my dear viewer. Now I gotta go out there and my stupid roommates are gonna think this is like the lead. The guy gave me a free lead with the thing. <laughs> it's like back home. Whenever you buy something, you always try and bargain with the dude, right? <laughs> so, out here in Canada, obviously, and in the States, it's like, that's not really the way it goes, or is it? I bargain with people. I'm like, what the hell? This is like 60 bucks for this goddamn thing? $59 for... But you don't understand. You're going to go and spend 20, 30 bucks on some stupid lady or guy who's, who's never going to give you any respect, and you're going to pay for their movie or their dinner or some rubbish, and it's like... You could get a wall pedal. Are you fucking kidding me? Oh, sorry, that's the second F bomb. Hopefully, it'll be the last. Cry baby. It's the shit. Trust me, it's the stuff. And in fact, that's exactly what the purpose of this movie is. We're going to put on our shoes. All right. <clears throat> Hopefully, we're still recording. You know, I'm the thing, the reason I'm bent out of shape, dear viewer, is that my iPhone is out of memory. And I'm like, fuck, why is my iPhone out of memory? It's like, I am the guy who 
basically gives, I literally give people computers, I've given a car away, a fucking car. You'd be like, no, how can you give a car away? Well, you hand the keys over to the dude and you're like, listen man, just don't get into a damn accident and get my insurance screwed. That's basically how you give a car away. Amplifier, check. Cords, check. Wah pedal, check. So dear viewer, I appreciate your comments and uh, I know you think I'm an idiot. Most of these damn people think I'm an idiot. My neighbors, my landlord, everyone thinks I'm stupid because I'm brown. It's funny. And actually, the funny thing is, I get to take advantage of it. It's like, I was telling some folks today or yesterday, because I'm brown and people think I'm a damn idiot, I get to do whatever the hell I want. And it's like, uh, basically, that's it. It's like, well, this guy couldn't have done it because he was a stupid, he's, uh, he's brown. It's like I'm invisible. I literally, I walk across the road and I almost get run over by a car. Why? Because I'm a brown guy. I dress nice, I wear some nice polished boots, put on a, a suit that I got from Bogota, Colombia, and the tailor is Medellin, from Medellin, a paisano. Medellin was where Carlos, not Carlos, but Pablo Escobar was from Medellin. I'm not, listen, Pablo Escobar, devil. Hitler, the devil. Anyway, let me get my, my, my uh, wah pedal and we're gonna go outside, dear viewer. My neighbors are pretty cool. By now they think I'm crazy or they think I'm an artist or a musician, or, but they're pretty cool. I've pretty much seen all of them. They have no problem with me making a little bit of noise from time to time. 45 minutes of some guy practicing his, his, his notes is not a big deal in this day and age. It shouldn't be actually. I've been kicked out of three or four or five goddamn places. Nice apartment building downtown got kicked out of because I made too much noise. Other place I was living up at, anyway, this is Toronto, but I was living up in another place here in Toronto near to, uh, you know, places called Scarborough or Scarberia as it were. <laughs> Scarberia, eh? It's actually a great place. It's also, on the one hand, it's the ghettoest place in this, in this town. It's where all the gangsters hang out. If anyone says North York, you tell them to go to freaking uh, Eglinton, Macau and, and then hang out there for just like five minutes. Anyway, they'll probably get plugged. But uh, anyway, I'm rambling on like I'm a gangster and a thug, but I'm not. I'm simply a humble servant of God and a security officer. But I do want to say one thing that you should like, you should pay attention. This is really, if you take anything from this movie, my dear viewer, what you should take away is pay attention. Pay attention to what's happening. Pay attention to what's happening inside of you, what's happening outside of you, what people are saying. What, don't pay attention. I mean, what people do is they're, okay, people are fixated on other people. So first of all, you've got to nuke that. The world of people and the world of things, nuke that shit. You don't want shit. You don't want things. There's enough things in life. You could have no money and you could still have the best life in the world. Seriously. As long as you're not worried about what people think. Right? So there's that. There's, there, there's that. So we're going to go grab our beautiful new crybaby fucking wah pedal. Sorry, that's the third F bomb. I know I'm being stupid here, but I'm really pissed off because my iPhone's out of memory. And it's like, I'm the guy who gives away like computers and stuff and I don't have memory. So that's not, that's really not cool. Right? That's not cool. And I don't even know what I did with the damn, I don't know what I did with the wah pedal. But here's my beautiful friend, Fender Squire. Now, for any wannabe guitarist, and the funny thing is everyone loves music and nobody has ever thought to pick up an instrument. If you really love music, you're going to pick up a fucking instrument and you're going to try and, and figure it out. And drums doesn't count, by the way. There's like a joke, which is that, who's the guy that hangs around with musicians? Drummer. And only musicians find that funny because it's true. No, but on the other hand, the truth is that the drummer is the guy who brings it all together. You could have some guy in a trumpet or saxophone or guitar or piano just wailing away, but without the timing and without the arrangement, it's nothing. Like Lars Ulrich, the drummer of Metallica, like his dad gave him a drum set when he was two or three years old, dear viewer. And obviously he's like Danish and then the rest is history. But the point is he arranges all the Metallica songs. He's like the editor. Remember one thing, the editor is the person who makes the movie. The director just goes out and shoots like 160 fucking meters of film and comes back after 80 days and he gives like basically 20 to 30 hours, 50, 60, 70, 80, I don't even know how many hours of movie or footage to some dude. Some dude. Now, 
personally, on a side note, I think they should actually publish all of that footage as DVD extras and whatnot, and there's money to be made there. But that's a, that's a side note. The editor creates the movie. Do you understand what, what his task is? And the, and the guy, like producers like to say, well, you know, nobody get, no, you know, producers don't get Oscars, right? Producers don't get, you know, that, like producers, if you read like um, uh, Mario Puzo, who wrote The Godfather, if you read his book, like The Sicilian, or actually, no, there's another book, um, Fool's Die, it's called. If you read Fool's Die by Mario Puzo, he talks about the movie industry for some reason. I guess it's, you know, he, he's an um, Oscar-winning screenwriter as well as a novelist. I mean, he wrote the, he co-wrote the uh, screenplay for the original God, couple of Godfather movies, right? So, I mean, he won an Oscar for it, which is, you know, you've got to bow down to people like that. It's like people who diss Donald Trump. I diss his fucking ass, but after reading his books and watching his, his rallies and shit, if you watch a Donald Trump rally... Like most people, 80, 80 to 90% of people who diss Donald Trump have not even seen or heard or read anything from the dude directly, apart from his tweets, which are, pff, there's nothing wrong with his tweets, as far as I'm concerned. I'm a, I'm a tweeter, right? Anyway, you know, he just says what the hell's on his mind. And obviously, the only difference between you and him is he's got 20 million followers and you don't have Jack, right? But you have a big mouth. And you're going to diss the dude without even appreciating the fact that he's got a billion dollar empire, right? And he's a fucking POTUS, the president of the United States. Anyway, we got our leads here. We got our new beautiful crybaby war pedal. We've got a... So the only unknown in this whole equation as far as I'm concerned is, is this stupid thing going to work? You know, like if it works, it's going to be like magic. I was trying to say earlier that only since, um, since uh, Jimi Hendrix... There's only one man on this planet who's actually uh, utilized the wah pedal correctly. And the gentleman is by the name of Jerry Cantrell from Alice in Chains. Now Metallica have a song on their album Load. Um, the, the temple that Jack built has a great wah solo on it. Okay, wah, 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 wah. Now I went to the pawn store and I was like, I want a wah pedal. Because I knew they had wah pedals. And the guy was like, what's a wah pedal? And he had to send some other dude in or something. And I was like, what's a wah pedal? Wah, 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 That's what a wah pedal is, guy. <laughs> you know what I mean? So Jerry Cantrell from Alice in Chains, he's the only person who's actually, obviously underratedly so, utilized the wah pedal. You know, if you listen to the album Dirt and the title track Dirt, dear viewer, uh, he kills it. He basically kills, he kills it. It's, it's even better than Hendrix as far as I'm concerned. I mean, Hendrix was... Hendrix. I mean, Hendrix, basically, you don't even compare. It's like IBM. IBM is not uh, a company you compete with. IBM is the environment in which you compete. Google is not a company you compete with. Google is the environment within which you compete. So within the framework of what Google has set up, you've got SEO, you've got ads, you've got ClickBank, you've got all these idiots trying to rank themselves, right, without doing any work or producing anything meaningful for any a visitor to their website so I'm just uh, kind of uh, uh, you know I'm kind of not sure uh, as to how this is going to work out so the amp is on the amp is plugged in and the Qatar is here I don't know where I'm going to put you my dear user I'd like to put you on this bin over here but for the time being I'm probably just going to put you right here and let's see what happens oh god it's all wet are you still there dear user I just put my phone in a puddle of water on your account and you're still not going to watch my you're still not going to watch my videos and you're still not going to subscribe it's in my backyard it's pretty cool right I know I'm the bomb right it's all crap don't worry about it <laughs> I'm looking for something to prop up my uh my iPhone which is you guys anyway so this should suffice and then I'm going to plug in the guitar plug in this all this other stuff and hopefully we'll have uh, we'll have a bomb like if this wah pedal works you don't even understand what the fuck you could play shit on it you could play anything on it like it's like in sales in sales like sales is defunct I'm a master salesman okay I'm a master salesman sales there is no such thing as sales that's what I have to say to you as a master salesman there's no such thing People hate being sold to, but they love buying. 
So if they love buying, then you don't need a sales guy. That's really the answer to that. It's the same thing with God. Like if you think this is all random and there's nothing going on and all the laws of the universe. So science boils down to, as I do, the laws of the universe. But science doesn't, science can't explain itself. Nothing can explain itself. That's the whole thing. Anyway, that's the whole thing right there. So we've got our wall kettle. We've got our guitar. The amp's plugged in. All I gotta do now is figure out how to plug in which card to which. So the guitar, I'm assuming, is gonna go to the wah pedal, and the wah pedal is gonna go to the Oh god. It's got a little fucking thing in it. Adapter. Oh god. dear user, this is not gonna work out. The thing has an adapter. Uh, like that stupid guy sold me this stuff. And it's got a nine it says nine volts here. And so therefore I don't even think it's gonna work. Anyway, let's see. If it works, that's great. If it doesn't work, that's that's life. Yeah, it's not working. Fucking fuck. The guy sold me a wah pedal without a goddamn uh, adapter. So now I'm just gonna jam out. Without a wah pedal, without a fucking wah pedal. The guy sold me a wah pedal without an adapter, and I'm like licking his ball sack. My, I even bought a ring from that dude. Like in Islam, rings are uh, rings are the, the shizni, right? Like especially if you've got special stones. Like Imam Ali, peace be upon him, once he visited some place, and he turned the whole place into um Najaf. It's called Najaf is a city. Najaf is his city. <laughs> Najaf. I mean, if you say Najaf to a Shia like myself, the guy will be like your servant, basically. So Imam Ali went somewhere in Najaf, and he went like this, and the whole place became like Zurri Najaf. It's a stone. They make stones of that stuff now. Anyway, let's jam out and see what happens. Thanks for watching. Uh, I don't, uh, uh, I don't appreciate rude people, but I do on my YouTube channel. So go right ahead and uh, tear me one if you think I need one. And blah 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 blah. Thank you.
resort back to Nirvana fucking simple songs which which are actually incredibly profound and have a philosophical bent to them songs are hard to play they're wankers and they're not musicians Kurt Cobain songs teach you about music basically basically of course they're 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 I mean for an unpracticed person anything is hard dear viewer okay you can hear sirens in the background I hope that's not distracting you but Kurt Cobain like you know what I gotta say Lane Staley from Alice in Chains just passed away in my mind yesterday okay I mean, like, I hero worship the guy. I fucking hero worship the guy. I hero worship his ass. I hero worship him. I'm a Muslim. La ilaha illallah. There's no God with a like, small g, illa, except Allah with a with capital G. Christian and Jewish Arabs use the word Allah. It just means God with a capital G. I still hero worship Lane Staley from Alice in Chains. Fucking guy just, his death anniversary came up. And. For years, for years, I thought the guy OD'd. I thought he was like jamming out with chains and he fucking OD'd, but that's not the case. I read up on it. Unfortunately, dear viewer, I have to tell you that unless you're a historian, you're a damn fucking idiot. Unless you've looked up and researched and read about Hitler and the Nazis and Himmler and Goering and fucking Goebbels and all these people, and unless you've read up on, on stuff, in the past, unless you've researched and gone to sources, Edward Gibbons, the Verizon, I'm not saying you should read Edward Gibbons. I haven't read Edward Gibbons. I tried downloading the goddamn audiobook from Audiovox or fucking uh, Video Libra or whatever, some nonsense with free audiobooks. The goddamn thing, Rise and Fall of the Roman Empire by Edward Gibbons. The guy was like 15th or 16th century historian or something like that. It's like eight volumes. Each volume is like going to just tear your mind apart. You don't even understand what's going on during those times. You got the Goths and the Germans and the Caesars. Like there were people who actually refused to be a Caesar. They were like senators and they were like, no. And people forced them to become a Caesar. Like Imam Ali He didn't want to become a so-called Caliph. What the fuck is Caliph? It's just problems. <laughs> it's funny. It's like everyone wants to be a manager. Imam Ali said that manager, this is what he said. You'll be like, that's pretty profound coming from some dude in a desert in 1400 years ago in Arabia he's like a manager is like a guy riding a lion manager or administrator or a ruler or person in charge person in charge of the situation supposed person in charge he's like a dude lying a, riding a lion you'll be like what's up with that the guy is riding a lion and everyone's like whoa everyone admires him but only that person knows his position that's what Imam Ali said. The guy riding a line, he's fucked. As soon as he falls off that thing, he's fucking fucked. Anyway, so what we got next is lithium. 
They tell me I'm crazy and I should take lithium. Fuck them and fuck everyone. I'll take what I like and I'll do what I like. This is Canada. And this is lithium. I'm going to detune this. I mean, the best way to play lithium is to tune your E down to a D for any guitarist wankers who are watching this instead of practicing. And if you don't know how to tune an instrument, that's the really very sad, right? If you want to learn how to play something on a guitar, then the guitar needs to be tuned. Playing music is not hard. Playing a guitar is not hard. It's like, believe it or not, it's like walking is harder than playing a guitar. Walking, just walking. A little baby falls down thousands of times before it learns how to walk. Thousands of times. I mean, if you've got kids, if you've got kids, dear viewer, you know what I'm talking about. like oh you're a great guitarist oh. some guy on Twitter some guy on Twitter called me me fucking me a guitar god I don't even have a sixth string on my guitar I don't have a like a high E on my guitar I don't have a high knee I can't even play solos on this fucking thing I you know what's funny it's a god move it's a god move my E string snapped and then I went and restrung this fucking thing I got I got like strings popping out of it and then the, the sixth string popped again. And I was like, fuck, it's a god move. I don't have a, a sixth string on my guitar now. It's like Jimi Hendrix. Jimi Hendrix would take a regular guitar and turn it upside down and play a fucking goofy foot or whatever that is, right? Anyway, here's lithium. Dear viewer, thanks for watching. Comments appreciated. <laughs> song but it's also a profoundly fucking complex song this is the thing I mean it's like anything Mozart you'll be like well Mozart he had a whole orchestra and it blah, blah. 
the dude used to think up things in his, he used to, basically, he used to hear these symphonies in his head. And Mozart or Beethoven, dear viewer, one of them was fucking deaf or blind or dumb or mad. I mean, they were all messed up creatures. All these people that, whose books you read, they were all basket cases. Dostoevsky, Wittgenstein, Dubowski, Nietzsche, Mozart, Beethoven, fucking Van Gogh. I live in a yellow house. Van Gogh had a yellow house. He fucking cut his ear off, they say. They're wankers. They're the idiots. His stupid friend Gauguin was a fucking, uh, what is this thing? Fencer. He got into a fight with Gauguin. Gauguin chopped his fucking ear off. And Vincent van Gogh was such a nice guy that for history's sake, he covered that shit up. In a letter to his brother Theo van Gogh, he actually told, he kind of insinuated what had happened. This is what the shit is. You guys are like living in a dream world. You need to wake up and you need to take responsibility for the fact of being alive and all this bullshit. And people are fucking idiots. That's all. This, this is, should be your motto in life. People are stupid. And of course that means you too. Anyway, goodbye. Comments appreciated. And uh, I even like the uh, occasional unlike.